It's just really, really a sensual experience. My name is Matthew Horky. For the last six years, I've been traveling around the world, tasting thousands of wines per year in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. And today, I'm talking about 10 wines from Bordeaux that you need to check out this year. Bordeaux is one of the world's most famous wines, one of the most prestigious appellations in France. It's named after the port city of Bordeaux, which actually now is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's got a beautiful waterfront, was an important port city. The appellation of Bordeaux surrounds the city of Bordeaux, and from there it's broken down into several smaller villages, several smaller appellations. What you have to know is the main wines of Bordeaux are red, although there are white wines produced as well. The major red grapes of Bordeaux are ones that everybody's heard about. Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdot, Malbec, and Carmenere. White Bordeaux is a little bit lesser known, pretty underrated in my opinion. Main grapes are Semillon, Sauvignon Blanc, and Muscadel. I've been to Bordeaux several times. It's more of a humid climate than you would think. It's a maritime climate. It's on the Atlantic coast of France. This kind of moderates the climate so the growing seasons are a little bit longer, more even, which is better for the grapes like Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. A lot of the greatest wine regions in the world are truly scenic and really beautiful. Bordeaux, for the most part, is pretty flat, except for a little hill between the villages of Pouillac and saint Estephe. On the right bank, there are some nice hills around saint Amelia and uh, Castillon, but for the most part, Bordeaux really, it's a flat profile. It's not the most beautiful region in the world. I recently got back from a trip sponsored by Melesima. I won this trip a few years ago by writing an article called German Pinot Noir. Is it really worth the hype? The prize was a week-long stroll through Bordeaux during En Premier, tasting all the wines from the tough 2021 vintages and visiting a few chateaux. When it comes to price, Bordeaux in particular, it's not always about the quality of wine. It's a lot about reputation, marketing, supply and demand, and story. All wine is like this, but Bordeaux in particular. So I've selected 10 really good Bordeaux. They're not the biggest names in Bordeaux, but I think they are excellent wines. And stick around to the end of the video, because I'm going to share a Bordeaux that you can find under 25 bucks that I think delivers tremendous value for money. Wine number one, we'll start on the right bank with Chateau de Ferran. This estate is interesting because it's owned by the Bic family. That's right, Bic, the Bic Pens. Actually, I always thought it was an American company. I didn't realize it was a French company. It's a saint Emilion Grand Cru Class A, so it is a Merlot-based wine. To me, it just tastes like true saint Emilion. Medium to full-bodied, a lot of dark fruits, some plummy notes, but saint Emilion always has this mineral notes, this tanginess that I absolutely love. The estate is cool because it's owned by the Bic family, so there's art gallery, there's even big murals that were drawn only with big pens. When I visited, there's a big tasting room with murals drawn all over the wall. They asked us to guess how many pens it actually took to do the whole room, and the truth is, it was only seven. Better yet, these wines run in the low $40 range, so I think they offer true value for money when it comes to high quality Bordeaux. Number two, a personal favorite of mine is Couvent de Jacobin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It is in the center of the village of saint Emilion. It's one of only two Grand Cru Class A's that's actually located in the village, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. One of the signatures of the estate is they use Petit Verdot in the blend. It's a Merlot and Cabernet Franc based wine, but they use Petit Verdot. I think it gives the wine a little bit of character. I like these wines because you can find them on average for about $35. They taste like real saint Emilion, real classy Bordeaux. And you know what? They age beautifully. During my last visit to the state, the owner opened up some old bottles going back to 1970. He was nice enough to open my birth year, 1982, which is a legendary vintage in Bordeaux. And that wine was absolutely singing. It was the best out of all the wines he opened. Number three, Troplang Mondo, which is also a Grand Cru Class A in saint Emilion. This is a little more expensive. We're talking Talking about $125 range, but the estate is beautiful and they have a Michelin star restaurant attached called Belle Perdri. These wines are truly, truly great. In the past, they were a little bit big, but under new ownership, they're polished a little bit more. They're more medium bodied, but they are still great. Lots of texture, long finish. 
And you have to get in now because the Grand Cru reclassification in Santa Maria takes place this year, 2022. I think that wine is going to be elevated maybe to Grand Cru Class A. That's the word on the street. So if you're a collector, you might want to buy it now before the prices go way up. Wine number four. We're going to Left Bank and we're going to White Bordeaux. We're going to Domaine de Chevalier. It's in Pesac Leonion, which is really a nice, beautiful place because a lot of vineyards are surrounded by trees surrounded by forest. Domaine de Chevalier makes a great red, but they're really famous for their white Bordeaux, which is made of Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc. It's barrel fermented. I think white Bordeaux is completely underrated. To me, great white Bordeaux, you have this kind of natural gassiness, this lemon type flavor that you get from Semillon, but you still get some of the grassiness from Sauvignon Blanc. You get some of the barrel, because a lot of these wines are barrel fermented. The Domaine de Chevalier Blanc ages really well. On my visit, we opened my birth year at 1982 and amongst all the reds all the whites the white 82 chevalier was my favorite wine i think it showed the best in the tasting Wine number five, Chateau Hobai. This is also located in Pesac Leonion. I've had experience with these wines before, and I have to say, going to the estate and revisiting them really rekindled my love for these wines. They're a little pricier. Average price, you're looking at $120, $130. They're mostly Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot-based wines. Cool fact about them, in the early 20th century, these wines were on par in terms of price with the first growths of Bordeaux, which are some of the most expensive wines that you can find in Bordeaux. To me, these wines are just classic dark cherry, cassis, tobacco, even some leather type notes, and they age exceptionally well. For some reason, I just like Pissat Leonion. I really like the whites and the reds from that appellation. Number six, we're moving up the Medoc to Pichon Baron. This is in the village of Pouillac. These wines are a little more expensive, close to $200. I mean, this is a second growth, so these are more prestigious wines. Pouillac wines are, are pretty varied to me. Pichon Baron represents the real big style from Pouillac. Big, bold, rich, dark fruit flavors, lots of tobacco. They're owned by the French company AXA, which also owns Quinta de Noval in the Douro in Portugal, and Disnoku, which is in Tokai, Hungary. If you go to Bordeaux, you have to visit the chateau because it is just absolutely stellar, fantastic, super scenic. It's like pulled right out of a film. Number seven, we're going to Cause d'Estournel. This is also a second growth. This is the most expensive dry wine on the list. Comes in at over $225, so these wines are not cheap. I'm not saying that. They're in the appellation of Santa Estef. Santa Estef wines, to me, are a little bit more gamey, a little more animal, which I really like. It shows a lot of character. The old owner of Cause d'Estournel sold a lot of the wines to India, so if you go to the chateau, the front door, the inside of the chateau really takes on that British Indian theme really resonates with me because over 10 years ago I traveled through India for over 42 days and it was just a killer experience one of the best experiences of my life these wines are super popular amongst collectors and I know they're expensive but it's worth tasting them if you can get your hands on them number eight Chateau Becheville in Saint Julian Saint Julian I think is a really balanced appellation Chateau Becheville really represents that appellation well it's a fourth growth and pretty expensive one at that $130 on average. I like this estate because I love the label, that little boat. It really stands out amongst Bordeaux labels. This winery is also owned by the Suntory family in Japan. I used to drink Suntory beer when I was in Singapore. This is a unique wine because it is on the left bank of Bordeaux, which is traditionally a Cabernet-based wine. Chateau Becheville had a little bit more Merlot in the blend, close to 40%, although that's changing and they're planning more Cabernet Sauvignon. Funny story, when I visited the estate, we were with the managing director and they opened up their brand new cellar. They turned on the lights and you saw the logo at the end of the cellar and I blurted out, oh, such a cute cellar. Everybody was laughing at me. Thank goodness the managing director had a good sense of humor. Number nine on the list is Chateau Beaumont. This is the value play in Bordeaux. This estate is actually owned by the owners of Chateau Becheville. And you know what? These wines come in at under $25, sometimes under $20. They're classified just as Au Medoc and Cru Bourgeois. Cru Bourgeois is a family of smaller wineries that offer good value for money, but they weren't classified in the 18. 55 classification. For those of you that don't know the 1855 classification were five different levels where wines were classified not by quality 
but by price they were selling for. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about first, second, third, fourth, fifth growths. Chateau Boma is on the left bank, but it has a good proportion of Merlot in the blend, close to 40%. I actually buy these wines quite a bit. I like to drink them young, even with four, five, six years of age on them, and even up to 10 years, I think they drink beautifully. Suck up on a case and you'll be more than happy. Number 10, the grandpapa of sweet wines in Bordeaux, Chateau de Kim. This is one of the world's greatest wineries. And when I talk about this, I'm talking about their sweet wine, which is made of Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc. These wines aren't cheap. We're talking about close to $500 a bottle. But man, if you can get your hands on them, if you can taste them, you're in for an experience. These wines are made possible by this little fungus called Botrytis. What it does is it infects the grape, pokes kind of holes in the skin, the grape dehydrates, shrivels, the sugars start to concentrate. If you can taste a good Chateau de Chem with some age, man, you're going to get some honey notes, marmalade, dried apricot, lemon peel. It's just really, really a sensual experience. I got invited to a real exclusive cocktail party in the Melesima trip, and it was just insane. There were a lot of great Bordeaux being poured, and everybody started to leave the party early. I don't even know why. I stayed till the end. At the end, they started popping open bottles of 1989 Chateau de Kim. I think I drank close to two-thirds of the bottle because nobody was there. Let me know, do you have any favorite producers from Bordeaux? Any value for money finds, personal experiences visiting chateaus? I'd love to hear. Drop them in the comments below. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>